Welcome back to the Ways to Flourish podcast, where we discuss how to flourish through our challenges and elevate voices across William & Mary's campus. I'm Lindsay Heck. And I'm Eric Garrison. And today we are joined by my wonderful student staff, the Wellness Ambassadors. After all this time, I am so glad that they're here to talk about the work that they do on our beautiful campus. We've got Kevin Aviles, Raven Pierce, and Kelsey McAllister. Welcome to all three of you. So let's hear from you. What, tell yeah. me uh, your year and your major. My name's Kelsey. I am a sophomore here at the college, and I am projected to major in sociology and government. I'm Kevin. I'm majoring in neuroscience and a minor in kinesiology and health sciences, and I'm a sophomore. Hello, I'm Raven. I'm also a sophomore, and I currently have a psychology major and a soon-to-be art major, too. So. Fantastic. And I'm so excited that you all are here to chat with us today because every now and then I'll get these questions of who are the wellness ambassadors? They're like this underground group that's doing these initiatives. And so I'm just excited that we can Mm. chat about the vision and and the shape and and the livelihood of of what you all do in the wellness center and on campus. Um, So I want to hear it straight from from. The three of you, what exactly do wellness ambassadors do? Well, wellness ambassadors, uh, when we're on duty, we work the front desk at the wellness center. Uh, We help manage the building, direct traffic, answer any questions for people that come up to the front desk, answer the phones, things like that. And on behind the scenes, we have three different groups, um, the outreach and events group, the policy group, and the marketing group. Uh, the outreach and events really coordinates initiatives around campus to promote wellness um, and help students flourish. Uh, the marketing group helps, you know, market and promote these initiatives through the social media and uh, um, events page. Um, and then the policy group is more for us that helps uh, bring us together, bring increased relationships uh, within the wellness ambassadors and helps with recruitment as well. And then collectively as a group, what is the main goal or purpose behind all of the work that y'all are doing? We definitely want to be the leaders on campus and promoting health and wellness, um, kind of shifting the narrative here on campus where, you know, this is a safe place. You can come, you can get help, or you can just come and relax in our new facility. So we're kind of here to be the students that are the liaisons between the health and wellness faculty and staff and the general student body. Definitely what um, Kelsey was saying about being a mediator between the students and the wellness center. So I feel like a lot of students don't really know about all the resources that the wellness center offers. And we really just want to be that connector piece for the students. Now, Kevin mentioned all the things that you could, could be doing, but what does a normal day look like for each of you? Yeah, so definitely when we are behind the scenes, or sorry, no, when we are behind the desk in the wellness center, that's where we're doing the more administrative things, setting up classes, um, like Kevin was saying, directing traffic in the building. But then we also work um, behind the scenes while we're on the desk. So for me, I'm in the marketing committee, and so that looks like making flyers, distributing those around campus, and like Kevin was saying, just promoting all the offerings that we have via social media um, and flyers. And then I'm in the outreach and events group. So typically, most of our magic happens in our meetings before we actually get to put the outreach and events together. And for the public, we brainstorm different ideas of how we can increase wellness and destigmatize wellness overall on, in our community. And so we just brainstorm ideas of how we can improve our um, strategies for the school and. That's what we do in outreach and events. And what I love about this group, I mean, the formation of the idea of a wellness ambassador, um, this was an idea that a seed that was planted as the building was being Mm, planned, mm. you know, who is going to help to manage all of the things that happen in these spaces um, on top of being a peer influencer as far as our perspective, what's going on in health and wellness, an ambassador of the eight dimensions, um, the ones who are influencing campus well-being through their work at the wellness center and through the initiatives that they do. And I love that we are in this space 
three years later, moving into our fourth year, and that the, the work that they do every day is so reflective of that original vision um, that, that was had. And you played a part in that. But, you know, I've got a question. We've got three bright and beautiful people in front of us, but how many wellness ambassadors are there? Yeah. So right now we have about 20 student staff and they're split into their three groups. Um, and we are always having the door. The invitation is open. Um, we love the diverse thoughts and perspectives and um, inviting new people to join our crew who have that passion for really shifting that campus culture into that, that space of well-being. Now, there comes to be a point where when students need help, um, they're looking for either guidance, locations, et cetera, et cetera, some advice. Are, are y'all like counselors or, or what, what is the role that you have as far as that goes? We're more student advocates. Uh, we're not counselors. The counselors are at the counseling center. Uh, we're here to, you know, talk to listen to anyone. We're willing to, you know, just ha sit down and have a conversation. Uh, if anybody wants to come up to us while we're at the front desk, we're, we're here for you. Um, but we're just here to guide you and direct you to wherever you need to go or to just be a friend to listen to. That's wonderful. And for y'all, as, as a peer influencer, a peer connector, why is it that you all think that you're the best resource um, for other students on campus and connecting them back to health and wellness? So I think what's really exciting, especially for the three of us here today, is that we are sophomores, so we totally understand how no sophomore understands what we have on campus. Um, last year was really tough. A lot of things weren't available to us. So especially for us sophomores, we're really excited to actually get the word out. We're all in such diverse friend groups, diverse parts of campus, that we can really spread our resources across campus and really show everyone that we do actually have stuff in the Wellness Center. It is open for you to use. And we're really excited to welcome students back this year. I love that, Kelsey, because you all have not, even as staff members here, you haven't had that full experience of, you know, the livelihood and all of the different activities and programs and classes and series that are floating through the building. Um, everything was remote and we had our virtual offerings last year. So it's nice to be able to move into that space um, of participation and having more inclusive and in-person access. Um, what is What are you guys excited about? What do you have planned for the semester? So I can speak for the um, outreach and events group, but really the wellness ambassadors as a whole, the biggest event we're trying to plan this semester is a Seize the Night event, which is basically a continuation of the Seize the Awkward campaign, which is like a nationwide campaign to advocate against um, mental health or to advocate for mental health awareness and just having awkward conversations because they often lead to the most, you know, vulnerable moments where people can connect the most. And we really just want to continue to allow people to share, to know that others care for them. And so through this event, we want to plan it in the wellness center, um, just a night where people can meet others, share their awkward experiences, just have fun, music, games, and to push the um, and market for this event, we plan to have posters and different flyers around campus where students can drop their most awkward moments to just promote inclusiveness on the community. Yeah, definitely going along with that, um, on the marketing side of the Seize the Awkward, we, the Health Center, we're lucky enough, actually got a subscription to the app called Nod, which uh, promotes those awkward conversations to getting past the small talk. And as a marketing committee, we are trying to implement some of those questions and put them on dining hall tables, especially for new students who are coming to campus. That way you can get past the small talk and really get into the nitty gritty that forms a deep bonds that you will find here on campus. And going into that, we're also going to start this new thing called Mindful Mondays um, on our Instagram page at Wellness William Mary. Um, we're going to start dropping some fun facts about the Wellness Center to promote just, um, yeah, there are free condoms at the Wellness Center. You stop by, you can pick some up um, and other cool things like that. So keep an eye out for that. No, I was just listening to you speak. Um and I heard earlier about the eight dimensions and, you know, sort of that embodiment of that piece. What role does flourishing play in the work that you do? And, and how, do you, um, how do you convey that to the rest of the community? I would say um, with flourishing, we really want to emphasize 
a harmony amongst all the eight dimensions of wellness? Because speaking as a student, it's really easy to get caught up in academic life, having no social time, recharge time. So we really want students to know that they can stop by the wellness center, sign up for um, even like a yoga class through the campus rec, just to make sure they're keeping up with their mental health, physical health, spiritual health, and ultimately flourish because you can't really flourish in a classroom if you aren't taking care of the other aspects of your health too. Yeah, um, we wellness ambassadors, we just went through a training last week and we put a large emphasis on the difference between the optimization and maximization. So especially for new kids when they come to campus, they're really, they try to get as involved as they can with every club. And really soon they learn that they just, you just can't do all that on top of your course load and trying to socialize and make friends. So we really want to place um, a big emphasis on optimization. So how can you get the most out of everything you're doing, but still be a human being and still take care of yourself? So that's where the flourishing part comes in. That's when you can figure that optimization part out. That's when you start to flourish. And that's what we're here to try to promote and help students find their optimization. And really at its core, between the work that's done in each group, the messages that you support and share throughout co the community, it's all about making wellness accessible, allowing people to understand what it is that's available to them, not just in the, the wellness center, not just within the programs that are here, but also at the rec center, that multidimensional approach. Um, like I said earlier, there's so often times um, that people are like, what, I don't know what's available to me. Um, and the wellness ambassadors are just a great source of information for anyone who is interested. So why don't you all let folks know what is the best way to get in touch with um, a wellness ambassador? Definitely just dropping in the health center. Um, we will almost always have a wellness ambassador behind the desk. Um, and even if you come in then you can find out too, you don't have to have a designated appointment to come in here. You can come in, see if there's a meditation cove open, chill out on the couches, do some homework, and it's a really relaxing place. So we're definitely here most hours of the day that the health center is open. It would be more than happy to help you. And also on the wellness um, WM page, we plan to have start posting uh, meet the wellness ambassador section. So if you follow our page, you'll be able to see um the different wellness ambassadors we have so you know if you see one on campus just say hey we front we're friendly people trust us we're nice so we want more people on our team how do they recognize you when I mean, you're wearing a feather bow are you wearing a big hat how do what is a wellness ambassador if i walked into the wellness center tomorrow how would i recognize a wellness ambassador if they weren't at the front desk uh, it, when we're, you know, working on campus, uh, we have our shirts on when we're on duty, but, but I, like we said, just keep an eye on that Instagram and then you'll see all our names pop up with our pictures of our faces. <laughs> and some fun facts. Mm. Yeah. You'll and, learn that um, one of our wellness ambassadors can actually do a perfect um, impersonation of a character. So check that <laughs> out and then come in and have her do it for you. Who could it be? I can't wait to find out. <laughs> I had no <laughs> idea. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> I think another look out for the uh, our integrative wellness, the concentric circles, yeah. so reflective of the the eight dimensions. Uh, so when you see those traveling around campus, flag them down. No, I've got a question for you three, and it's because I'm a reflective thinker. It just dawned on me, but there is the knowledge piece of okay, these are the events that are happening. This is where you can go if you need help. One of the things I find difficult, how do you work with students who think that wellness is conflicting with their academics? The ones who will tell you, well, I can stay up till 5 a.m., drink five Red Bulls, and still get an A on my paper. How do y'all deal with that? How do, you, how do you confront, how do you face that challenge of, um, you know, they're not anti-health, but I don't need all this stuff. I, I've got this. I think that kind of goes back to the whole max maximization. So sure, I'm sure that you could stay up till 5 a.m. and you'll be fine the next day, but three days later, you're gonna feel a tiny bit of drowsiness and you might just look past it, but I mean, we're really here to promote that you don't have to be at your very lowest point to come in and get help. You know, you can spend five minutes a day meditating and maybe that will help you a week from now. So it's those small things that we're trying to switch the narrative influence our peers so that it doesn't have to be this dire state of help whenever you want to take care of yourself. 
And different things work for different people too. So say for me, I'm a runner. I go for runs for fun. A lot of people don't enjoy that. And that's not something that is going to help them get better. So if I just tell everyone, go for a run, that's not going to work. So it's really about having a conversation with someone about, hey, this is what works for you. Go go read a book for, for like 30 minutes at swim by yourself, just relaxing, finding what works for you. And it's really about wellness your way, figuring out what, what's best for you and finding that optimization to eventually reach that harmony with your eight dimensions. Yeah, and then several of the um, wellness ambassadors actually went through a CPE training, so a certified peer educator training. So that ultimately we can just do our jobs better. And in the training, we really talked about meeting people where they are and someone with that mindset might really be, you know, stuck in their mindset. It's kind of hard to shift that mindset. So we try to at least understand where they're coming from and maybe try to get to the root of why. Because a lot of times when people reevaluate, you know, yes, I can do it, but is this the best way to do it? They might be more open to change. Something we also really place a large emphasis on is just because we're wellness ambassadors does not mean that we're the most healthy mental health, everything on campus, you know, like we have our struggles, we're just like everyone else, and we're not above anyone just because we're a wellness ambassador. So we're really, like truly here to be a resource and to help you figure out what, like Kevin was saying, what your way is for wellness, how you're gonna best, be the best student, be the best club member, and the best like hallmate that you can be. And that's what we're here to promote. And I love that because so many times, Students will look at a student group like yours, or I should say you're actually a, the, a wing, you're an arm of this, this building, and think, oh, you'll have a healthier-than-thou attitude. And you really are just so grounded. As an alumnus, as an employee, I find that so refreshing because you will see the healthier-than-thou people, but it's nice that you have just, you've really taken that on as a, um, the whole wellness piece as, as something personal, but not that you are above everybody else for what you're doing. Yeah, I think that's something really refreshing also about our group is that most of the reason why we found this job, why we got interested in it was because we all have had our moments. We've all just kind of learned that, you know, you're going to need help no matter if it's big or small. And we are really passionate about being that advocate for others um, so that when they have a moment like that, they don't feel alone. They don't feel like they have to totally do all the research themselves and find all the resources themselves. Like we're here to be a crutch when they need us or to just walk alongside them when they're perfectly okay too. Yeah, wow. it's it's not about being perfect. And I think, Kevin, before you came on staff, we had, we had a little uh, conversation about, about this in particular. It's not that you are the picture of health and wellness, you know, the, the poster person for what that 